we are just free games from Europe. Free games from competing in, I think, the Conference League. I don't think it's the Europa League anymore, if we can win the EFL Cup. Today, we have the semi-final. We are going to be taking on Southampton. They're doing okay in the Premier League, but not the biggest of big teams. If we can beat them over two legs, we set up a tie with either Liverpool or Manchester United. It's going to be tricky to go all the way. Can we get one step from glory? We're about to find out today. Let's do this. How's it going, folks? And welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number nine with Crystal Palace. Debatably the biggest episode since we switched allegiances and moved to this club. We are taking on Southampton, as I've already set up. It is the 7th of January. The transfer window is open. I'm not spending any money at the moment. We've had a couple of youngsters join us, but I don't intend to dip into this transfer budget. I'm trying to squirrel it all away for what at least at this point feels like an inevitable promotion. Of course, the board expectation this year is to win the league. We are way on course to do that. So with that in mind, there is really a focus now, I feel like, on cup competitions, which brings us to today where we are competing in the EFL Cup. The pre-season expectation was to reach the semi-final. Um, we do have that same expectation with the FA Cup. That really does give you an idea of how high uh, the chairman's expectations are for what we should be achieving at this club. The good news is, when it comes to the EFL Cup, we've, we can tick that one off. We've done that one. Of course, the FA Cup is lingering around. And in fact, we do have an FA Cup game between the two semi-final legs we're playing today. We have been drawn against Luton. They are a team in our league that I expect us to beat. There might be a little bit of squad management required because... I do intend to go all in on the games against Southampton today, uh, given the fact that it, it is a semi-final. It's a little bit bigger than the third round of the FA Cup. So let's talk about the games since you were last here. Of course, last episode, we wrapped things up taking on Brentford. And in the very next game, just a few days later, we were taking on Derby County, who, with us beating Brentford, had climbed up to second. So Derby, a good team, a team that we'd already played in a live com just a couple of episodes ago. The good news is we were able to repeat the success of our previous meeting, beating them here. It was a really, really nice performance from us in the first half. Two late goals in the last five minutes really sealed the deal. You've just seen Severin's finish. It was a nice one. And uh, well, he was actively involved in this game. Two assists, including that cross for a Manu Kone volley. Made it 3-0 at the break. In the second half, we chilled out a little bit more. Um, you can see here, it was a rotated team as well that played this game. A great team performance. I was a very happy bunny. After that game, two more games played, both in the month of January. We kicked things off with a 6-2 win against Stoke. Gurajaga with a brace. You can see De Silva getting a goal, uh, Middleby getting a goal, and Omaric getting two. This man, one of a few players who have been complaining about a lack of first-team football. Of course, one of the downsides, I suppose, with our big squad and all our youth talent is it's difficult to give everyone the games that they want. And whilst for a few players like Ferguson, who we talked about last episode, I have elected to just sell them, there are others that I am somewhat desperate to appease. Uh, one more player who left us in January for a similar reason was a Akoli. Um, signed him last year as a squad player at centre-back for £3.2 million. This year, played for us twice and played fine, but just didn't really have a reason to play him in the first team. And he wasn't happy. We've sold him to Palmer. What that does mean is that if we do get injuries at the back, Graham Franklin, who at the start of the year was really the hot prospect for the future, just kind of training with the first team, is now in a position where he might end up playing a fair bit of first team football. But given how the season's gone, I, I trust him to step up. Most recently, we took on Hull City, a 2-0 win here, a rotated team ahead of the cup game as well. Um, squad management, I think, is a very, very important factor for us at the moment. Of course, the months of December and January, at least managing in England, tend to be a bit of a nightmare from a fixture scheduling point of view. Um, the good news is that it was a solid team performance, and Horvat in this game was actively involved. In his second ever appearance uh, in the championship, he got a assist, which was great to see. 18 years old, signed for 9.25 million. I feel like I didn't mention the price tag when I signed this guy in the summer. Um, he was one of the players who's been playing for the under 23s, been doing well, kind of on the fringes of the first team. You can see here, perfectionist personality, can play out on the left, but cuts in on his right foot. Consistent, uh, a youngster with a lot of potential for the future. He has developed a lot, actually, I feel like so far this year. You can see a sea of green arrows, which is what we love to see. 
And uh, yeah, good to see him have an impact in the first team in that game there. Now, if you're sat at home thinking something looks different today, something's weird about this video, maybe, maybe you've not noticed the difference. Uh, I'm stood up to record today's video. I got a new desk that's a standing up desk. It's very fancy. Um, and as a result of that, I thought, what better way to do the first ever standing up live commentary than a cup semi-final. It felt like a special occasion or something in my head. I, look, we'll see if it we'll see if it brings good luck. Maybe I'll start doing this for every single cup game. You know, some people have the superstition of wearing a suit. My superstition will just be that I have to stand up for all the big games that I want to win. Um, I'm not sure what the logic is there. Let's that, not argue with it. it. It's a bit different. It feels weird for me. I, I don't know if I like it or not. Let me know what you think. So in terms of team news for the first leg against Southampton, as I mentioned before, against Hull, we rotated things around. That means that we come into this game relatively fresh. Unfortunately for us, Henier is still out with his broken hand that he sustained last episode. So it's going to be Sané into the first team, a man who has complained about a lack of first team football. I've promised that he's going to play more, of course, with Henier out. We do need Tom here to step up and show us what he's all about. I'm hoping he's going to be a solid addition to our team. Um, elsewhere in the side, you can see we get a slightly expanded bench for this competition. So we have got a couple of extra options up our sleeves. But generally speaking, um, we have pretty much everyone at full fitness. And with the exception of Henier, it's a full strength 11. De Silva on the left, middle B, putting him back in the middle. He's been on a good run of form lately. I think last episode I was discussing how he'd been a little bit hit and miss and disappointing. Um, on the pitch, he's not been great. In terms of actual development, you can see here, especially when it comes to his mentals and physicals, he's developed a lot. So I am keen to persist with him, keep giving him first team football opportunities. Three goals in his last five. Hopefully he's going to be able to deliver on the big stage here. This is the semi-final. It's over two legs. The second leg is only in a week's time. And we are at home for this first game. So we need to make it count. So I did check up on Southampton's league form going into this game. They'd lost three of their last five, if I'm not mistaken. So... I want to believe they're there for the taking. They've got a good team, uh, plenty of regens, of course. We are in the future. Our former man, Brian Ode, is out on the right-hand side for them. We sold him to Southampton in January, or not in January, in the summer for £42.5 million. Um, I'm scared that he's going to do stuff against us, Ode, out on the right. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. Corner early on here. Gura Jagger to whip the ball back post, cleared away before Tilio could get there, but only as far as Sane, who's going to put it back into... Well, what I hoped would be a dangerous area, it wasn't exactly a great ball in, but we still have the ball on the far side here. Sane to McIntosh, back inside to Manu Kone, who's going to play it over to De Silva. He's in on goal, and he finds the bottom corner to give us the lead inside the first 15 minutes. And De Silva signed for £44 million. Debatably, all the all-day money when we sold him for £42 million was invested in this man. And, I mean, that is a finish of a £44 million striker. Lots of pressure on his shoulders, the number nine, to come up in the big occasions. He's put us ahead here. What a start. Corner. De Silva, the man of the moment to take it, into Tullio, who heads it goalwards, narrowly over the bar. So coming up to half an hour played here, we've got a throw in on the near side. We're having a lot of the ball, not had enough shots on target, really. Just the, the goal that we scored has troubled the keeper. But we could have another chance there, Silva. Hits it over again. Talked about the lack of hitting the target from good opportunities. That was another great one. Our inside forwards having a very, very good day so far in this match. As far as Southampton are concerned, Ode has been their star man. And well, he has whipped in the ball there. And a penalty's been given. I'm not sure what it's been given it for. Apparently, Tullio handballed it. We now look at Ruiz. Monty is going to be the man to take it. Can Ruiz make a stop for us? He goes the right way. He turns it around the post. Oh, my word. This game has twists and turns. 180 minutes of, uh, well, drama was expected before this. We're only 40 minutes in. We've seen a missed penalty. What a chance for Southampton to pull it even. It would have been a massive goal for them, somewhat against the run of play. I mean, Tullio, I want you to walk over in the changing rooms. Go talk to Ruiz right now and thank him. He has just saved your bacon. We're up at the break, but I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy just because I feel like away from home, we need... Maybe a two or three goal lead to stand a particularly good chance. And of course, that's not discounting the fact that they could score immediately. Uh, and they just have. Uh, Trabby is the man who's finished it. It was a free kick that hit the woodwork. Ruiz has then just not got up with any urgency. No one in terms of our defence wants to help out here either. It's taken. It bounces down the goal line. Ruiz looking for the ball. He's spinning around. He can't find it. And Trabby taps it in from a yard out. 
It's kind of bizarre. Southampton have got this really high XG, but they've had a penalty and that tapping that you've just seen, which massively inflates it. I feel like we've been way more in this game than the scoreline suggests, but of course that doesn't really mean a great deal. As Ode, our former man, is charging forward on the right-hand side. Coming up to 60 minutes gone here, I've got to think about making some subs sooner rather than later. Plenty of game changers on the bench. I'm hoping I'm not leaving those game changes too late because Southampton are bringing the ball forward. Monty with the ball, tackled away by Valder, who's on a bucking. Did very well there. Middleby has dropped deep with the ball. The Aussie plays it forward to go to Jagger. One option in the middle to pick out. It's Sane. It's a simple as you like finish from less than two yards out. And he taps it in to reinstate our lead. Massive, massive goal there. Super intelligent play by Gorojaga. Kind of surprised the keeper didn't come out for this. Middleby, as the, the false nine drops deep, picks up the ball, happy to hold it up and dribble into the wide areas. And yeah, you're not going to miss a chance like that. We've got the lead back. I'm still going to make changes though. I am still going to make changes here. I don't like the amount of yellow cards we have, particularly in midfield. Um, Valdir being nervous, being on a yellow card, that feels like a recipe for disaster. So I am going to bring in Shackleton there. Elsewhere, oh, there's, a, there's a temptation to take off Middleby. I know he was involved in that goal we've just scored, but I'm going to take him off. I'm going to do a bit of a shuffle and bring in Severin out on the right-hand side. I feel like he's the kind of man who, bringing him on against tiring defences, especially with the amount of pace we have in the wide area, could be a, a, you know, a wise decision which wins us this kind of game. Doesn't mean that De Silva's going to move into the striking position, but he's proven this year he can play there. Of course, he is naturally a striker. And then Gurujaga gets to play on the left-hand side, cutting in on his right foot. Am I happy with those changes? I mean, I will know more as to whether or not I'm happy with them at full time. But they, they feel like the right moves to make, at least right now. I say all of that. And then, of course, there's a throw in immediately. And it's Southampton in a dangerous area with the ball here. Bruno Otavio going all the way back to the keeper. Severin pressing high up the pitch. We force them to go long and we spring the trap. De Silva is through. In that striking position, he goes around the goalkeeper. Two goals in the space of 10 minutes have turned this game on its head. Oh my word. I think it was Gorojaga who played the ball forward to De Silva there. Keeper kicks it, Lon. It, it's a massive head by Richards there. And then we just catch them out with a big ball through the middle. De Silva round the keeper, cool as a cucumber, slots it away. And I mean, the tactical changes worked. So I'm going to say I'm happy with those decisions now. Wasn't sure. I can tell you now, two minutes later, best decision I've made all day. We're 3-1 up. I was about to shout encourage and I hesitated and then a highlight began. I'm going to shout encourage anyway. We are two goals up against Premier League opposition in this first leg, but it is Souza with the ball here. Players queuing up in the middle. Tullio. I thought he'd given away a penalty again, having handballed it earlier, but he won the ball on this occasion. And we get it away from danger for now. I say for now because the highlight is continuing. That said, it's not exactly in a dangerous area. All played for. Doma Richards gets his head on it already this game. We saw him get his head up on the ball, which set up our second goal. Can we maybe set something up here? Manu Kone to Tullio. I feel like something's about to happen, but this could be the pointless highlights that you see in Football Manager. Skurajaga on the far side. Inside to Shackleton. Richards bringing it forward. Back to Shackleton. The sub flicks it in towards Surin, who heads it against the crossbar. My, oh my, oh my. Making it 4-1 there would have felt like a killing blow, dare I say, in this game. Two minutes left, one sub left. I'm going to make it. I'm going to bring in, uh, I think, Horvat. No, not Horvat. We're going to go with Santiago. Just to end the game, bring him in at centre attack in mid. But this game feels like it's all done. I say that, and then a highlight begins with 45 seconds left. A goal here for Southampton to close the gap to one could be massive. They're in possession at the edge of the area. Perez to Howard Bellis. Ball played forward to Monty. Ode there. And Brian Ode, our former player, has just put it in the back of the net. He has just scored to make it 3-2. 3-1 looks pretty. 3-2. Knowing that we've got to go away from home. That, that doesn't feel as convincing, does it? It, doesn't, it just doesn't feel as good. Is perhaps the best way of phrasing it. There is still a mountain to be climbed. Pretty much the last kick of the game gives Southampton a lifeline. We had chances there. The Severin woodwork hit right at the very end. 
felt inconsequential at the time, but that was an opportunity to make it 4-1. I'm still going to tell the players I'm really, really happy. We put ourselves in a great position going into the second leg. We are 90 minutes away from a trip to Wembley, and that, as a championship team, is something we should always be excited about. Elsewhere, you can see here, Manchester United have just beaten Liverpool. Uh, Sancho, Adiemi, Haaland and Cliver with the goals for either team there. Um, safe to say that we dodged a bullet by drawing neither of those teams in the semi-finals. If we do make it to the final, it's going to be a difficult game either way. At the end of the day, 3-2, still a really good performance. Got a Jagger, two assists, got man of the match. He has been absolutely exceptional. I've just realised that he's on loan from Liverpool. Can he play against his club? I don't know if he can play against his club. I hope they won't recall him. I kind of still want to sign him permanently. Should we see if he's in? No, I'm not. Okay. I want to sign him permanently. I'm not going to pay £100 million for him in January. But if we get promoted, oh, I'm going to have to have serious considerations. The worst thing is, the better he plays for us, the more that the asking price is probably driven up by Liverpool, who, I mean, by all accounts, probably don't have room for him in their first team. Anyway, folks, we have got that FA Cup third round game against Luton in midweek. We don't give a Scooby-Doo about that for the context of this video. I want to get to that next 90 minutes away against Southampton. It's going to be big. Don't go anywhere. So normally I come back at this point in the video and I say, I'm ready to get into the next game. I'm not ready to get into the next game. Half the team's missing. Kone and Valdir are suspended. Tilio's on international duty. Henier is, uh, well, coming back from injury. And, uh, well, Kaizo is also out so it, it's, just, it's not great the preparation for today we're missing a lot of first team players now the good news is that our midweek game against Luton I say midweek game it was on the Saturday midweek relative to this episode I suppose um was a convincing win we won 4-0 fully rotated team nice to see Talby get two assists and the man of the match award of course he was kind of one of the faces of our rebuild when I first came into the club last January came in had an impact for us when we've called upon him this year, he's been pretty reliable. Four goals and an assist in five league games. But ultimately, we have far too many great attackers that he just isn't going to get the starts that he got last year. But nevertheless, whenever he plays, it brings a smile on my face to see him do well. And he is still, at least for now, um, proving to be a useful squad player for us. So as much as I can sit here with a faux smile on my face, I do actually need to try and fix the team for today's game. We get extra spots on the bench. We might not even fill them today. Um, I guess we're going to have to play Omarajic in place of Tilio. Now, the good news is he played midweek and he actually played quite well. He's played, to be fair, you know what? Bakir has played well every match we've given him a chance this year. He's been complaining about a lack of first team football. He's going to get an opportunity today. In the centre of the midfield, we're without a lot of players. Of course, Shackleton was meant to be in, but he's out with an injury. Um, elsewhere, Valdir is out, as we've already mentioned. Kone's already out. The good news is that Ferguson's move to MLS appears to have fallen through. I think I must have missed a very important news inbox item because it doesn't show him as going to the team that he agreed to go to anymore. I think it was Seattle. So here's where the real problems begin. Santiago... Is going to have to play box to box midfielder today. If there's one position where we're maybe light of a player, you could argue it's centre mid. Of course, normally we'd have Tullio who could go to bowl, ball in a midfielder and then Ferguson would move across. It's kind of the perfect storm, I realise, where I think we have five first team centre mids just unavailable. So Santiago is going to have to try and do a job for us. And elsewhere, Sane is going to come into the team. Um, that is because Henier is. Still not really fit. Not ready for a fitness test. The bad news for him is I'm allowed nine players on the bench and I think he's just going to be on the bench because oh, I don't think I have nine fit players anyway. You know that psychologically this team selection headache is affecting me because I've not even ordered the subs by position. This is something I swear by normally, but I'm just a bit sad and fed up today. Um, this is the team that we're going to go with. But for the most part, the front four looks kind of normal without Henier. Centre midwise, obviously, Ferguson and Santiago, they're not great. I will be completely honest with you. I'm not overly optimistic about them. And at the back, of course, we've got Omar Rajic coming in. I mean, we brought him in for a significant sum of money, really, as a backup, £8 million. Let's see if he's worthy of that price tag. This, whatever this is, it, it, it's not ideal. And having learned from previous mistakes in other series this year, I am going to check the competition rules before we get started. Extra time is played if the scores are level, and there's a penalty shootout if the scores are still level. There's no away goals, there's none of that madness, there is an extra sub in extra time. I'm going to hope it's not going to come to that. So we are 3-1 up after the... No, we're not. 
We're not. We're free two up. It would have been free one, but for that last bit, that's that is that's an awkward. Normally, I'd edit this bit out, but that is just too awkward. I would have to leave it in. Normally, I'd be really happy with free two up, but with our current squad situation and knowing that we're going away from home, it's going to be tricky. And I guess knowing the fact we could have had a free one lead all all of a sudden now with all the kind of team injury stuff. It feels like even more of a missed opportunity that we couldn't see out the game. But look, we've got to reset mentally and try and get off to a good start here. Lots of pressure, you'd imagine, on Santiago playing that box-to-box -box midfielder role. Hopefully he can use his creativity as Middlesby finds his way through. And you know what? I take it back. I said Middlesby, like plural. He always seems to find himself in the middles of the pitch and between the defenders. That's why I like a false nine, actually, in FM22. They do like to make those runs in behind. I feel like previous years, they wouldn't make that run. They'd always want to drop deep at all times. But Middleby there, as much as his hold-up play and his creativity is core to how he plays, the man has like 18 finishing. He's shown it again there. Some really, really important goals. Hopefully that early one is just going to ease the team nerves a little bit here. Corner for Southampton. Ode, our former man, taking it, whipping it back post. It's hit the crossbar. And it's Trabby, who scored the rebound in the first leg. That header has somehow crept along the line and over the line. And I just kind of feel sad and a little bit defeated. How has that snuck in? It's barely crossed the line. It's not even hit the back of the net. It does still count, though. The rules of football are it has to cross the line, not hit the back of the net. It's 1-1 on the night, 4-3 on aggregate. Been very, very even so far, but it's going fine. Free kick from deep here. Sané attempts to play it through, doesn't do so successfully, and now it's with Ode. He gets tackled by Ferguson, stepping up on the big occasion here, Ferguson, an experienced head. What he lacks in ability, maybe he makes up for an experience. And Santiago is through. Oh my word, the youngster had a chance to really announce himself on the big stage there. That was an opportunity. Sadly for him, it was stopped by the keeper and now another corner to deal with. Surely not. We've conceded two corners. Bruno Ottavio has scored it. And it's Ode again, our former man who's delivered the ball in. Football manager has a cruel sense of humour, doesn't it? It has a cruel sense of humour. Ode in, headed in at the near post. It's 4-4. It's 4-4. I'm going to get shout... Oh, I was about to say I'm going to get shouty shouty at half time. I still might, but it might be slightly less genuine, the shoutiness. Because if we could get a goal here, with what's left of this half, the 40 seconds that remain, I would be slightly happier. Santiago, De Silva, Sané. Got a Jagger, middle be his offside there. Wouldn't have counted anyway. Good stop by the keeper. That is going to be it, surely, for the half. And indeed it is. 4-4, even game. I argue we're very unlucky to go down at the break, 2-1 down on the night. Now, I'm not going to go as far as to throw a water bottle, but I am going to pump my fists and say, don't lose faith. Don't. I don't know why I've gone with don't. I've never used don't lose faith before, but you know what? Today, I feel like I need to not lose faith. It's almost like I'm shouting in a mirror at myself. Really, I'm the person doubting the team. I feel like we've got the quality here. I am going to get shouty shouty and shout demand more though. An hour gone. Now, normally I'd look at the bench here and have some really good options. They don't really exist, although we do have Severin today. De Silva's been poor. Gorajaga's has not been good either, but I have more faith in Gorajaga to kind of turn up on a day where he's struggling and just score a chance that comes his way over De Silva. So I'm going to move Gurajaga out onto the left-hand side and bring in Severin. Elsewhere, Richards has not played well at left-back. But I don't really want to make a change for change's sake just yet. I mean, in all honesty, we just don't have quality on the bench today. I mean, Henier, I could maybe gamble, but he failed his fitness test. It would be a, a silly gamble, really. Could maybe bring in Ida and play him out on the left-hand side over Gurajaga, but that feels like a drop-down in quality. I don't really want to overthink the changes too much. I mean, last game, first leg, I trusted my gut and it repaid us immediately. So I'm going to trust my gut again here as Santiago whips it into Severin, who's fresh off the bench. And not for the first time across the two legs, he has hit the woodwork there. We are ramping up the chances created. The opportunities are falling our way. And next year over two. I was about to go to attacking before the highlight began. I'm going to stick to it anyway. It's Zenon with a free kick here for Southampton. A free kick here would be huge. He hits the woodwork on this occasion, unlike last game. We've reacted quicker. Now could we spring the counter-attack? Got a Jagger bringing it forward. Men on ahead, rushing on ahead. Ode, though. Oh, Ode, Ode, Ode. He has been a thorn in our side today, and he stopped that attack dead. 
Perez for Southampton, throwing it into Pharrell, who turns his man well, gets it in. Perez, Sané though, reads it nicely. The lanky playmaker. He is a bit of a beanstalk of a player, capable in the air. He's got the ball on his feet today and, well, he's just ran into trouble and ultimately surrendered possession. Southampton now going to try and play out from the back and, well, successfully so. They're going to switch it over to Singo, who nods it inside to Ode, who has really played like he's got a point to prove. Ferguson wins back the ball partially, but then gives it away immediately. Michaelenko with the ball now. Back to Farrell. There are nerves here. I don't know if you can feel them. I can feel them. I can hear them in my voice. There's seven minutes left here. Southampton on the attack. Ode breaking through in a dangerous area. Pulls it back to Modder, who hits it on the volley. Oh, my word. Just wide of the post. I am on attacking. I'm staying on attacking, though. I'm not changing things here. Sané, Ferguson. I'm a little bit nervous of him on a booking, but I need an experienced performance from him here. Middleby. Ferguson in possession again. Back to Santiago. The youngster's done fine. He's come in in a very tricky situation here. And now the ball's to Richards, who pulls it back for Middleby. Who kicks it straight at the keeper. There's four minutes of added time. This game's going to extra time, I think. Unless, I mean, the whistle should be going. The game should be ending, but it's not. And Southampton are on the attack. Ode, not like this. He's hit the crossbar. He has hit the crossbar with the last kick of the half. We are going to extra time in the EFL Cup semi-final. An away day to Wembley is on offer. We have probably been the better team in, on the balance, but we are 2-1 down. And I feel like now it's a case of bringing in fresh legs. I'm going to take off Goda Jagger and I'm going to bring in Horvat. This is a massive occasion for the 18-year-old. But I think I trust him more than Ida, and he's impressed me when he's played in the league. Elsewhere, Ferguson's been walking on eggshells all game. Shackleton failed a fitness test. So again, it's another kind of trial-by-fire moment for a youngster. Ode Hernandez is going to have to be the man who comes in in that ball-winning role. I have still got one sub. I think I'm going to hold on to it for now and see how the next 30 minutes play out. A penalty shootout is looming. I would not be surprised to see more twists and turns before today is over. Southampton forward here. Whip back post diamond. Heads it just over. That's not exactly the first highlight I wanted to see here inside the first five minutes of extra time. And I mean, I'll tell you what, since we've gone to attacking, we have not created nearly as much. So with that in mind, I'm going to go back to positive. I am just going to tell the players to pass into space and run at the defence more. We brought on lots of fresh legs, especially the wide areas where we've got Severin and Horvat on either side. Kind of want to encourage them to run at tiring players here for the last 10 minutes. Five minutes left and we're going to Pens, folks. And Pens feel almost inevitable at this point, but there might still be one last chance either way. Southampton have grown into this game. I feel like they have, well, I suppose with better players on the bench, looked more and more dangerous as the game has progressed, as the clock has ticked on. They are the team in possession here. Farrell with it. I thought for a second we were going to sneak away the ball and hit him on the break. We might still be able to do that though. Santiago dinks it towards Horvat. Unfortunately, he can't quite get there, but that is an atrocious ball away. Severin plays it to Horvat, the youngster. And a Bardadoni saves it at the near post. Rather tame effort in the end. It goes to penalties. This sucks to look at, and I'm going to show you why this sucks to look at. We have 13, 12, 11, 11 for penalty taking. But if I hadn't made the subs, I actually had some much better, better penalty takers available. De Silva, Ida, Ferguson. I guess we brought on Horvat, who's not terrible at them. But yeah, some of our better penalty takers, not available right now. Not overly confident going into this. I've asked the assistant who he wants to put where. Severin, looking anxious ahead of the shootout is not really what I want to see. The good news is everyone else is pretty optimistic. I'm just going to tell the players to stay calm. It is a complete lottery here. We are taking first. We are setting the pace in this shootout. Middleby, the Aussie, steps up, hits it, sends the keeper the wrong way. That is the perfect start as far as we're concerned. But there's a long way to go. And we're maybe going to need some more penalty-saving heroics from Ruiz. He did it in the first leg. I thought for a second he was going to get his fingertips to that one too, but it's ended up in the roof of the net. It's now on Horvat. 
who is very much experiencing trial by fire in this game. He steps up, he slots it away, no nonsense, from the long, young Croatian. Modder, who had that volley from the edge of the box towards the end of regular time, steps up for his penalty. Ruiz can't get down to his right quick enough. Goes the right way, but the ball finds the back of the net. Now the pressure switches to Sané, a man who's really been filling in for Henier as of late. Can he step up and be the hero? He can. Three out of three for us. That is as good as it gets in a shootout. I've just realised that Brian O'Day is probably going to score the winning penalty, isn't he? That's how Football Manager tends to work. We've had six penalties taken. They've all ended up in the back of the net. It's now an Ode Hernandez. I said Ode Hernandez. It's not Ode. Ode. Ode's the player we sold to them. Oh, Hernandez, I can't remember your first name. Please just score. It's an awful penalty, but we'll take it. My brain's turned to mush. It's the stress of the situation. It's the pressure. If Perez scores this, it's essentially sudden death. He steps up. He hits it. Four penalties scored by either team. No one has missed, and it's now all on Santiago. It is basically sudden death from this point onwards. Santiago steps up for us. Can he finish it? Of course he can. Cool as you like. Sends the keeper the wrong way. Oh, my word. We are a penalty right now away from a cup final at Wembley. Bruno Otavio steps up. Ruiz walks like a boss to the centre of his goal. Can the Spaniard... Keep this effort out. Bruno steps up. He hits it. I thought he was going to stop it. He went the right way. But unfortunately, it's not gone in. And now it's all on Severin. He was nervous coming into the shootout. Please, Severin. He finds the top corner. It doesn't matter if he was nervous. He steps up on the big occasion. He's like a diamond. He's formed under pressure. Actually, are diamonds formed under pressure? I'm not a geologist. I don't know the answer. Cleverson steps up for them. I can't, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm stood up because I can kind of shake my nerves out. Cleverson, please miss. He scores. How long can this go on for? How long can this go on for? It's now with Omarajic, our centre-back. The number 16 steps up, finds the top. It's a great penalty. You know what? I'm sorry I've not been playing you more. I know you're not happy with me. Thank you for turning up then. I can't handle this. This is getting... I'm going to have to walk away and just stop looking. Wouldn't be a very good video then. Uh, it's Machelin for them to take penalty number 14 of this shootout. We've had 13 scored. Is it going to be 14? It's not. Get in there. Oh, my word. That was, far, that was far too much and far too stressful. We have beaten Southampton with a very, very injury and suspension ravaged team. At centre mid... We were missing like three or four first team options. Omar Bamidele, man of the match, but it was a pretty solid team performance across the board. And with that, there's a trip to Wembley next episode. How can you not love that? We are one game away from European football of some kind next year. I don't know if that would be a blessing or a curse. Unfortunately, as we've already talked about last episode, that one game is either against Liverpool or Manchester United. I mean, pick your poison. But we are going to be going to Wembley. Manchester United have won this competition the last three years. I'd kind of rather not play them in the final. Speaking of which, I'm getting forward now because there's still the other semi-final to be played out. I want to know who we're going to be playing against. I believe Manchester United won the first leg 3-2, if memory serves me correctly. I think the game kicks off at 8pm, so I'm just going to mash continue and we'll see what's going to happen over there. I said I didn't want to play Manchester United. We're going to have to play Manchester United. They have just beaten Liverpool 1-0 in the return leg to make it a 4-2 win on aggregate. And with that, we've set up a date with Destiny. A date with a team who, to be honest, have been the dominant force just across English football for a little while. I say all of that. They're actually struggling in the league this year in seventh, but they did win the league a couple of years ago. They are a very, very good team. And given how poorly they're doing in the league, I'm sure they're going to be hungry for a little bit of domestic success. So that cup final is on the 29th of February. It turns out that 2032 is a leap year and we're playing on a date which only comes around once every four years. What a date that is to get in your diary. It's our first cup final as Palace manager. I didn't expect it to come this season. That doesn't mean I don't want it any less. I am desperate to get silverware as soon as possible. I feel like that's the kind of thing that could definitely help with our job security. I am conscious of the fact our owner is a little bit mad and should we 
start to fail towards working towards the league title. Being able to point back at some silverware I won maybe will buy me a little bit more time. Anyway, folks, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. What a way to end the week tomorrow. A huge cup final. In the meantime, hopefully we're going to be able to continue to progress in the FA Cup. But at least for now, that's going to go on the back burner. Just as a little recap as to how the league is looking. We are still top. We look very, very pretty at the and clear at the top of the table. There is even a chance, actually, that we might be promoted by next episode. If not mathematically, certainly within, you know, uh, the realms of... Uh, requiring us to lose all of our remaining games and other teams to win all of them, which probably won't happen. So whilst it won't be mathematically guaranteed, I might just be celebrating like I've won promotion already anyway. Pretty epic live com today. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like on it. I'm hoping the final isn't going to be quite as eventful as that. I'd happily take just a boring 3-0 win. That would that'd be good. Um, yeah, hopefully I see you guys for that 3-0 win tomorrow. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And until next time, it is me, Jack. I'm going to go sit down. My legs are starting to ache. I'll see you on the next one.